Welcome to Deep Thought. Changing your behavior patterns. You know what, um, somebody, who fo- I think she follows this channel, or I know she follows one of my channels. I, I follow her on Instagram, and she had something interesting. I should have looked it up, read the exact quote, but it was basically along the lines of, um, you know, what we think of as our personality or just like behavior patterns that we developed. And I would take it a step further in saying these are behavior patterns that we developed in response to trauma, right? Like, um, I'll give an example. And some some of the people who roll with me on the deeper levels, like on my private sites and stuff, may recognize some of the things I'm saying. Like if, um, say there's a situation where... um, you have uh, a male, a little boy or girl, let's say roughly around the age of five or six, and their parents divorce or something like that, right? Around that age, and you know, it's 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 a complicated. Um, I could actually do an hour show on this, but basically, they it's a trauma for them, and they might develop the behavior pattern of trying to control their opposite sex mate whenever they deal with members of the opposite sex mate and on a secondary scale just people around them and that's just to maintain their happiness now that's not really a part of their personality it's just a response to a trauma like another one is um and one i know quite intimately it's um you know if you felt a subconscious rejection by your parent of the opposite sex like around um like around puberty or something, right? Your behavior pattern to deal with that trauma, because it is a trauma, and it might not even be a major thing. That's something that the parent think about. It might be something very minor in the parent's eyes, but major to the uh, budding teenager. You know, as a result, they might feel like, hey, you know, to cope with this, I have to, I since I can't stand this rejection, I develop a behavior pattern that causes me not to be rejected. Right. A lot of times what we think of as our personality are just defense mechanisms. They just defense mechanisms to something, some type of trauma. In fact, I would go as far as to say, yeah, significant part of it. Significant part is not what we were born with, but what we developed, our adaption to something. That's why, you know, if you talk about the concept of parallel universes, right, the concept is always that there was a different choice made where somebody's personality could turn out totally different. You know, we're the product of our experiences, right? So, I'm saying all this to say this. If you have some, what you think of is like just a part of your personality may not be. In fact, I would say for most, every, I would say for the overwhelming majority of people, maybe even every single person listening to this, including myself, what we're doing is a reaction to something, right? So the thing is, how do you change that? How do you change your behavior patterns? Well, the first thing, first thing is really to acknowledge that they exist. And they acknowledge, and usually if you're at that point where you acknowledge they exist, you have to acknowledge that they're probably not helping you in life. Now, some of these things can help you. Let me just be clear. You know, if you have a controlling personality or something, you might actually probably make a good manager. <laughs> you would probably make a good manager, especially at a retail level, right? Or um, if, you know, the trauma caused you to kind of withdraw from people, you might be the type that would be good at maybe research or something, right? Because you might, you might, you can't connect emotionally, so you can shut down your emotions a little bit better, so you can look at stuff in a more objective manner, right? Like I said, I could do probably an hour on each each one of these things. It's five major, five major uh, what uh, is known as a counterfeit personas, but it does get into another thing. So first thing, though, is just recognize, hey, I'm doing some stuff that's not helping me. That's the first thing. It's counterproductive. You know, if, if you keep getting into the same type of relationship all the time that's dysfunctional, You got to say, well, what is it in my behavior that's causing this? What is it in what kind of pattern am I exhibiting that draws a certain type of male or female to me, whatever you are, or a certain type of mate to you, right? Or or what's what's in my patterns 
that I can't keep a job. Right? You know, it's like you get these people, they might, they can't keep a job, constantly getting fired. And they'll say it's just me, but they'll blame everybody else. But I say, no, what is it, what kind of behavior you're exhibiting that you can't go to a job, be consistent going to a job? A lot of people lose jobs just because they don't show up on time. You know, so what is it about it? Or I can't follow directions or do what's right on this job to keep it. What's the behavior pattern that's hurting me, right? It could be like, um, I heard about this uh, dude recently. I heard about this dude recently because I was talking with somebody in a um, in a store I was buying some Christmas stuff for, and they said something. Now, you know, I, I'm that type of person people just talk to, and they were talking about a manager that had worked there. And they say, yeah, only problem was, you know, they had to let him go. He was flirting too much. What was it about that manager that was doing some behavior that might have been always there with him? What was it about him, right? That was a behavior pattern. So the first thing is always to acknowledge it. Second thing is don't accept it. Let me say that. Don't accept it. A lot of times we do bad stuff or we do stuff that's not helping us. And we'll just say, that's just me and I'm helpless. It's like, no. I guarantee. I guarantee. Like, if I talk with anybody, if I talk with anybody long enough, and I could probably even fill out, I could even probably do a questionnaire. And I'll ask them certain questions. I would probably have my mentor help me with the questions. Right? In fact, he helped me because he gave me a questionnaire, and I was like, oh, snap, right? You know, you find out, it's like, no, that's not you. No, that's that's how you dealt with some trauma. That was the Band-Aid that you put on. A lot of people don't take off that Band-Aid once they get used to it. It's like putting on a cast, and you never take it off. It's a crutch. It's like you, you just keep using it, right? You never need it. It's like, if, it's like wearing glasses and... Which does happen, like your, your eyesight gets better, but you still wear the glasses, even though you don't really need to, right? Because you accept it. You say, oh, this is just me. A lot of people do that. That's why they don't change. See, the thing is, you don't, you, you don't accept. You recognize it, and then you refuse to accept it. Now, doing all that don't mean the behavior is going to go away because it's an automatic thing that you do. Because once you develop a habit, it takes a while, even if you're conscious of it, because you will always do it unconsciously. But then, and here's the biggest part, the will. And you know what, I might, um, I might get deeper into the will into the next one. Depends on how much I talk about in this one, right? But you have to use the will at the crossroads. What is the will? It's to say it's making an active choice not to do something. That's the will. Like people, like sometimes people say somebody got strong willpower. That's some most of the time that's just being stubborn and obstinate or something. Being the will is about making a choice. Now you about to do something. You see this. You 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 recognize this pattern that you have. You refuse to accept it. So at that moment you say, No, hold up, I'm gonna do something different. Right. Like, say somebody had, um, and uh, just to be clear, I'm not making light of this. This is a serious thing for some people. Say they have a sex addiction where the word no or they have sex at inappropriate moments or inappropriate places. That's when it's serious to the point where it can cause you to lose jobs. And there's people who've actually lost jobs because they couldn't control that impulse. The will, when you employ the will, that the will is like when you get to that moment, when you need to say no, the will allows you to say no. And like you say, no, I will do this. You know, my body wants to do this, but I will do that. And it's tough. The development of the will is the toughest thing. In fact, I think I will talk about it in the, uh, in the next one. But that's the key to changing your patterns. The three things. First, you have to recognize it. Then you like refuse to accept it. And then use the will at the crossroads to change it or to deal with it. And, uh, yeah, I, I definitely need to do the will as something separate because it's, I'm going to tell you what. Um, the overwhelming majority of people on this planet, their will is not developed. they just flowing along. Basically, they're slaves to their patterns. 
right? They slaves to their particular behavioral patterns. So they will, they, it's like you following along, even if this hurts you, you know? You know drinking that alcohol going to kill you, or you know drinking that cigarette is going to hurt you, but your behavioral pattern got you doing it anyway. Yeah. Got to have that will. So anyway, right, that's it for now. Keep rising and transforming.